Welcome back to the Zero K Anniversary 2 2 tournament. We are back very quickly with the next qualifier match. It's going to be, I believe, We Are Groot versus. I want to say, I'm not quite sure the entire team is, like, bottom corner towel or something like that. And we are on Iski Channel. It's going to be ship versus ship versus. Well, actually, ship and Amphbot versus ship and Amphbot. Because why not? Amphbots are kind of hard to deal with if you're ships, because not a lot of stuff deals with underwater stuff. So yeah, just get those ducks and do a bunch of damage. As this duck is going to demonstrate right now. That is a good duck demonstration right there. I would say at this point that it looks like Anakin and Felius, uh, corner towel at this point I'm calling them, is going to have a bit of an advantage. Not entirely sure, but it does feel like that is definitely the way to go. They did, oh, right, they did actually win game one. Should have done that before it started. Unfortunately, I had to jump in slightly midway through, so I can't... What the heck is my... No, that's not it. Sorry about this. Anyway, the... Team 2 wins. There we go. So, yeah. They they won game 1, as far as I can tell, from having ch chat logs. So, this is game 2. And it was on Iski Channel. Probably actually put that stuff on here. I'll do it after this match. Anyway. So, with that, we do have a... Like I said, bit of advantage coming in here. It looks like we... At least have a bit more of an even game than the last time. Economically speaking, We Are Groot is not just going down without a fight. They're actually doing a lot to maintain their territory over the north side of the map. And rather threatening Anarchist Commander. Already Anarchist Commander actually getting a lot of damage in. Does get protected by their own hunters and cutters. But there's still that threat. Still that message coming in there from We Are Groot saying, No, you are not going to just come in here. You are not just going to be able to destroy our stuff. Or take the territory. We're going to fight back. And I kind of like that. Especially as Iski Channel is a map where there aren't a lot of metal extractors. It's not nothing, but it's not huge. So it is important to save every single one. Like, to take as many as you can. I mean, as usual, but even more so because there's not a lot of backups. And also, not a lot of ways of getting overdrive, because if you don't have enough metal extractors, you don't have a lot of overdrive vectors, and that kind of messes with you. That's also a dead mariner. So unfortunately, that is going to be that for... That Mariner for We Are Groot. At the same time, Orphilius coming in here with both of the ducks, but there's already the Hunters and the Serpent just to have a little extra bit of protection. But even then, of course, there is not an easy way of stopping the ducks from actually destroying all of these Metal Extractors. And on top of the fact that the Mariner just died, there's not much really around here. There's a Conch trying to use a setup, but clearly it's being set over to the eastern side of the map to take all those Metal Extractors. Rather than actually fix everything else up. So right now, it's proving very difficult for anyone on We Are Groot to actually get their economy going and maintain. At the same time, the GBC is just getting in with that overdrive. And the reclaim even more so to push their economy to twice that of their opponents. I don't know. We Are Groot, they're definitely trying. They're pushing hard. They're doing their best. But it's just not going to be enough, unfortunately. And I don't see how they're going to be able to get in here. And really deal the damage. They're going to certainly try, though. Mariner coming in, taking a fair bit of damage. The Hunters doing everything they can to stop it. And indeed, it does get sunk, but the Urchin is up. So truly getting rid of this commander, stopping this entire firebase, that is going to prove to be a major challenge. That's where I'm thinking I'm not sure there's a whole lot going for them right now. I think that we are Groot still running uphill battle, but they are trying. They are doing a pretty good job, all things considered. And... They're at least maintaining their territory. Now that the reclaim is all over with, the bottom corner GBC team does not have as much to work with, but it's still a lot. They still managed to pull that into army. They're still winning on attrition. Getting the Grizzly up. So I don't really agree with the Grizzly on a water map, to be honest. They're getting the Grizzly up, but Grizzlies have to surface to fire. And while this map, like most modern water maps, is kind of shallow, it's not that shallow. Like, the Grizzly's not going to be able to do a huge amount. Certainly not going to be able to fight anything underwater, so Cat Lady still has a lot of options to work with. But at this point, I just don't see it. This is Cat Lady being torn to pieces. Looks like that Orphelius is already prepared to deal with whatever might threaten that Grizzly. Which makes sense, although at the same time, there's the scallop coming in here, threatening everything, and nothing's really getting in the way. The Serpent is trying, and actually is doing a pretty good job, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. 
Scallops getting rid of the Serpent. Should be able to get rid of the Caretaker in a second. That slow does run out, and there we go. The Scallop able to destroy everything. The Urchin finally up, but that Caretaker still goes down. That still adds another minute to the Grizzly's production time. Orphelius in a bit of an awkward position as a result. At the same time, though, not a whole lot that We Are Groot has going for it. And Counterattack is coming in here to deal with We Are Groot and what they've done. And it may be enough. Ducks are coming in to try to deal... Oh. Try to deal with the Metal Extractor. Finally deal with the Metal Extractor. If you would, yeah, deal with the Metal Extractor. That would be really great. So able to deal with the Metal Extractor sooner or later. And that's, that's good. That works reasonably well. But the problem, of course, is just a matter of relative army size. As you can see... There's a lot more army. A lot more army cost. Value 1,500 compared to about... Actually, wait, 1,900. No, that's not entirely theirs. Compared to about 600. I mean, cutters definitely have the force multiplication effect, but it's not like only one side has them. Anarchid has them as much as Green Squig does. Right now, I'm a little bit surprised we aren't seeing a few more scallops. I mean, I like it. It's working out all right. But, I mean, maybe it's not even good to have the Anth bots. I feel like there's just so much prepared for it. There's... They have the hunter set up, right? The serpent. The only thing the corsairs are not going to be able to hit the underwater units, so there is that. But on top of the fact that there's not really a whole lot of units available, there's also a major split right now coming in. Arena kid trying to get rid of everything that's been built up by Green Squig. Green Squig's cutters are doing a fine job kiting their way back out of danger, sort of. Actually, really nice flank there, too, or not even flank. Really nice, just getting out of position. Like they pulled everyone around. What was it called? Juke? Yeah, it's a word. Really nice juke there. Coming in from Green Swig's forces. Unfortunately, not quite enough. The Hunters are able to rip apart the Cutters. Like, two or three shots getting rid of all of those Cutters. And again, that's the big issue here, is that the bottom corner team just does not have any real threat. They've... Like, they've taken twice as much metal. They've already... They've consistently had an economy at least 10 to 20 metal per second greater than their opponents. So, there's not much going on here that can really help out when it comes to what green what we are group can even do I attempt coming in here the hunters however are doing a great job just making all those serpents regret having ever been built and again we're seeing serpent after serpent after serpent and or sea wolf rather sea wolf after sea wolf after sea wolf serpent's not a thing anymore that hasn't been a thing in a while sea wolf after sea wolf and I don't really agree I almost feel like we... I would like to see Mistrals, but I have a feeling that Mistrals are not that useful. I mean, no one ever builds them, which makes me think, okay, is there something I'm missing about the way Mistrals work, or is just everyone else doesn't know Mistrals exist? Because I would think, considering there's a lot of Corsairs, like a lot of Riot units, a lot of shorter range units, that you'd want something with a bit more range to deal with it, but then the Mistral might not be the thing to go for. I mean, we are seeing an Envoy, we are seeing a Siren. As comparing range... Okay, Mistral definitely outranges Corsair by quite a lot, actually. 610 to 320. So Mistral would definitely win. Although the Seawolf, also a good choice. I mean, the Seawolf can't be beaten by the Corsairs. It's just that if the Hunters are nearby, if any any escort is around, then it's a moot point. Still, though, the Siren is up at the same time as the Grizzly getting in here. And the Grizzly... Well, it's sort of threatened. It took long enough to get here. But at the same time, Cat Lady already has an army pretty much ready to deal with this, and the Grizzly can't do anything underwater. So at this point, it's just a matter of Scallop versus Scallop, and the Ducks against the Scallops and the Urchins are not going to have an easy time. Eesh, that is not great. It does force Orphelius' commander back, but the fact that Orphelius' commander was able to get that far ahead already is not a good sign. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do with that. The fact that their commander got that close really shows the holes in your defenses, but it's fine! The commander does go down! Orphelius unable to continue rebuilding over in this forward base, so at the very least, some territory has been secured for We Are Groot. Secured with cost, but I'd say that was worth it. However, I'm not sure how worth it it is, because the problem is you got, rid you got rid of the commander. You got rid of the one thing that's able to build in the front lines without having to worry too much about being attacked. Or at least is able to get away. It's able to defend against light attacks. But there's also an army there, so it's not like a conch can't just come in here and start ripping things apart. I mean, it'll certainly be easier to snipe a conch, assuming that, you know, the the units actually stay alive long enough to do so. 
So sniping a conch is definitely a possibility. It's just, well, yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. But at the same time, the fact that the army is still around means that I don't know how well this is going to work out in general. Because, well, the army... The army's around. No way. There's no way that anything can be signed. This conch can easily come in here and start rebuilding the metal extractors and never have to worry about anything. So right now, we are grouped basically in their last stand. This is it. They're trying to push in, trying to get rid of these scallops. They don't really have the units to do so. I almost wish they had switched over to Hovercraft to get some claymores, because that, I think, would actually work amazingly well against all of these scallops. But we aren't seeing that at all, and honestly, I'm not really going to blame them. They didn't have a huge amount of resources to do that with. It would have been a major gamble, basically trying to get rid of... Oh, actually, 2,000 metal worth of scallops for a couple claymores. That might actually have been worth it. I think it would have been worth it, actually. At the same time, these Corsairs are throwing their lives away to get rid of a Gauss turret. That is... I mean, I can kind of see why, but it's not really working all that well. As, at this point, the Grizzly coming in here, trying to finish the job. Not really trying to finish the job that hard. I mean, the Grizzly could have probably walked in a lot farther into the base. But it doesn't matter. Anarchid's Sirens coming in for support, able to get rid of all these Seawolves. And that Grizzly is a basically completely uncontested. It can just walk in here with the Scallop support and the Siren support. Ship with the weapon and everything, but at the same time, the Corsair's coming around the back just to secure that even further. Of course, that Faraday being having been built up by Cat Lady, I agree with that Faraday. Really good use. Actually, it's the entire reason these Corsairs were not, not able to get into the base. I just have a bit of a too little too late feeling about it. It doesn't seem like it's going to actually truly do the job when you think about it, because, well, this Grizzly is still here. Scallops are still here. Everything is still here. All these units are... They're all here. They're all ready to rip everything apart. I don't... I don't expect... There's gonna be a whole lot of good news here. And indeed, Green's quick. Kinda not sure there's anything they can do. Cat Lady at least able to get that factory up. But it's not gonna be enough. If you look at the amount of territory that's been captured... It's almost entirely in the hands of the Corner Towel people. Or GBC team, whatever you want to call it. I mean, seriously, what the heck do they call their team? Throw in the towel bottom corner. Okay, I just couldn't fit that in the little name field. Yeah, so throw in the towel. That's probably a better name for them. We'll just go with that. But yeah, they are going to be... They're not going to be throwing in the towel. They're, in fact, going to be winning. Green Squig setting up the resign pole, and that should basically set up the game. I mean, Cat Lady, they're trying valiantly to hold back, and I totally agree. This is going to, if they don't win this, they're going to be going to the loosest bracket. But I don't see how this is not going to happen. I think this is definitely going to be a lower bracket game for them. It's going to be it. That's, I mean, there's the... There's the last shots coming in here. The, score, the scallops in. The sirens are in. Everything's in. There's not a whole lot that can save them. And that is a cat lady deciding. Yep, that is that is the towel throwing time. We are at the end of it, and cat lady, or we are Groot rather, goes down into the lower bracket alongside disciples of Krabulon and Moon Merc. And that. Is that is it for round one? So for the qualifiers, I realized that was under two. Darn it! Okay, this page is getting really annoying to me. I realized it was under two tournaments, or not two tournaments, the two games. But yeah, so it goes. So with that, it's going to be it for round one. We're moving on to some round two matches after a short break. Much shorter than the last time. Sorry, that was... I don't know why I keep forgetting to actually put on the proper turn or whatever. Yeah, we'll be getting to round two in a sec, or I guess the round of eight.